want the day to go through the continuum of the opposite of what you're experiencing. Because there's no rest for the soul of your foot wherever you are in the lands of the captivity. The scripture tells you that. We have been a purist, we have been a persecuted and abused people ever since we've been here. And the key scripture out of all that you read here, which points to you being the people of the book, historically, prophetically, and futuristically, is in Deuteronomy 28, 68, which says that Yah will take you back into Egypt again in ships. There ain't nobody else ever gone no place as a people in ships into slavery but you. That prophetic scripture and your history and what ships I'm talking about, and I ain't just talking about the Dutch man of war. I ain't talking about the Nina the Pinta and the Santa Marie. I'm talking about the ships called Grace of God, John the Baptist, Angel, and the good ship Jesus of Lebec, because the heathen used biblical phrases and names to bring you into captivity on ships that he sold your fathers and mothers and tore the flesh off their bodies, lynched them, and sold them for a quick seizure and easy game. Mm-hmm. Nobody Come else on. has that record. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Because nobody else taught you the truth of your great heritage. You were ashamed of the slavery. You didn't want to talk about your slave past. But now that you know you're Israel, you're sitting up and you're crying aloud and raising up the thunder of Yah's word. Because that is a badge of not honor. That is identity for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It identifies who you are. Absolutely. I put you right on the map again. Because prior to that, you wandered around aimlessly like many of us did. Yes. Saying, Who am yes. I? Who is yes. my people? And why do these things happen to us like no other yes. people had them happen to us? And the Creator sent you a man. He sent you a woman that dropped the seed. Behold, and somebody came along later and watered it for one soul. And one does the watering. But Yah! Yah gives the increase. The increase. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Did he bring you out? Kang. Huh? Kang. Kang. Did he rescue Kang. you? Kang. Kang. Hallelujah. He brought you out of the darkness, which represents the Kang. light. Hallelujah. Truth, Hallelujah. which represents his marvelous light. Hallelujah. 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 Talk back to him, Israel, and let him know you love him. Because he's listening to everything he's saying today. That's what I'm talking about. Talk the truth today. So now you're talking about this captivity. You talk about what was going to happen to us in the captivity. All this thing that we're going to lay down in bullet point and flash. And Yekazi will take us into the same book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going into verses 49 and 50. Now, you've been paying attention. You've been writing it down. I know you've been logging it. Now log this down and look at the similarities of what this prophecy says here. Devarim. 28, 49, 50, and it reads on this wise, Yahweh will bring you to a nation against you from afar. Slika. Yahweh will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you will not understand, a nation of fierce continents, which does not, res- which does not respect the elderly, nor Show favor to the young. Hallelujah. So the nation is coming up, which is the subtitle of the great invasion, it says. Yahweh will bring a nation against you from afar. Babylon wasn't afar. Egypt wasn't afar. The nation from afar, the scripture says, from the ends of the earth. So when they set off sail looking for the new world, it wasn't the old world, which was close. Because the new world was off in a whole nother hemisphere. You know, your brain has got two hemispheres, the western hemisphere and the eastern hemisphere, the right or the left. They're two different places. So you're in the western hemisphere. You're not from here. You're from the eastern hemisphere. Your folks are from the eastern hemisphere. The black man and woman in Israel, who are the people of the book, you think from the eastern hemisphere of your brain. Not the Western Hemisphere. So when I say right-minded thinking, I'm talking about Yah-centered Eastern Hemisphere thought. Not the Westernized logic and reason, but the intuitional spiritual thought from on board. Hallelujah. Help us. 
Y'all understand what we're talking about here. It says it's swift as the eagle flying. It didn't say it's swift as the lion or the griffin runs because that was the symbol of Babylon. It didn't say it's swift as the ox or the bull. That was the symbol of Egypt. This is the symbol of an eagle. What nation on the earth? But Rome and America is the symbol of the eagle. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the prophecy to let you know where you are. As swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language, now wait a minute now, you understood Egypt language, you were in Egypt for 400 years, you understood Babylon, because Babylonian language is a combination of Hamitic and a combination of Semitic, but you didn't understand English when you got here, huh? You did not speak the things, Yankee Doodle, come on, talk back to me. Hallelujah. Language you would not understand. You did Teaching not speak right, Tokyo. You right. didn't speak English. You spoke Hebrew. And that was the reason they took your mother tongue from you so you could not communicate with each other. And more importantly, you could not communicate with your Go ahead. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. That's why they stripped it from you. Did you? Come on, Israel. They didn't want you to read. They used to put your eyes out. They would castrate the men. They would gut the women. They cut the babies out. They stuff. Come on. Why? Because they know if you were able to read that old mm -hmm. you would find mm -hmm. yourself in the pages of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And then you'd out the Apocrypha because you would find yourself there. But you mm -hmm. would be too. So you wouldn't find yourself because you cannot, in, you cannot enslave a people who know their history, who understand what's going on in their present, who will then follow their future according to what's written for their glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all understand? Yes. Hallelujah. So you want to kill a tree, you cut it off where? At the root. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? So you want to kill Israel, you kill it at the root. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you we're talking about. Y'all understand? Y'all got to hear this today. I know that go all glory, honor, and praises unto the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, and it says the nation was of a fierce continence, right? So a continence is with the appearance of of it look like. So the appearance of that nation is fierce. It's warlike. It's aggressive. Don't you know that America prides itself on the spirit of pride, which you read at the beginning of our lesson, that pride that y'all hate? Huh? Come on, Israel. Think about it. Just look at it. You got Trump talking about he's going to make America great again. America was great in materialism and it's pride. Let's, come on, let's just deal with the truth here. Materialism and pride, wealth, those are not spiritual values of the Creator. The spiritual values of the Creator are humility, justice, rightness, fairness. Those are the things that come out of your law. That's why you are the people of the book, because in you is the nature of humility and forgiveness. What do I mean? You done served everybody else on the planet except the Creator and yourself. Come time now for you to serve the Most High and to keep His commandments. And you don't try to out-scripture each other. Don't try to out-teach each other. He who is greatest amongst you, him or her, is he that serves. You want to do something better for each other, then out-serve one another. I challenge you when we assemble at the next high holy day, somebody get up besides me and get out and wash each other's you want to do something great, then serve one another. Somebody serve some food. Because we're going to walk together hand in hand because we hung on trees together hand in hand, neck in neck. She was on the ship with me in the holes of the ship. So if you want to be great, then yeah. you serve one another. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Y'all all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Take us now, Aki, into the prophecy that governs Deuteronomy 28, 68 through, or 23, 28 through 63 and 68, and 28, 
49 and 50, which is Genesis 15, 13, and 14. And now we're going into, you know, another portion of prophecy as we get now to go into the history of it. We're just going to read that prophecy because it's going to have make more sense to you a little bit later. Go ahead. Okay, Berashit 15, 13, 14. And it reads on this wise. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is a prophecy for us today. Know that of a certainty, Abraham, your seed, Zira, not your religion, not your faith, not your denomination, but your seed, your children. Now look now, that prophecy is given in the 15th chapter before our father has one child. That means that you were predestined to serve. You understand that? That we were predestined to go into a strange land. Egypt wasn't strange to us. Huh? Abraham had been to Egypt before. That wasn't strange. Huh? And there you would serve for 400 years, not for 350 like you did in Egypt because Joseph was the governor for 80 years and you stayed in Egypt for 430. And if you subtract the 80 years from 430 years you sojourner, that brings you to why we say we were there 350 years as slaves. But you were never no 400 years for slaves. You were being a strange land among strange people, and the slavery you were going to in the latter days, you were going by ships. And we got the historical proof that you can go and pull it off the Internet, go to the library. You got here to the shores of Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. 2019 is 400 years. You could come out of captivity after the four hundred year. Now, if you understand prophecy <clears throat> and how prophecy works, Almighty's judgments are absolute. We're going to go into the book and see what occurs because then now you've got heaven and you've got earth as the witness, right? You know what it says? Okay. okay. So now remember the scripture says by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Let's see if we can find a third witness to witness against Israel. Joshua 24, 17, and 24. Now we're into the historical book where this actually occurred. We're looking Joshua for... Joshua 24, 17 through 24, and it reads on this wise, For Yahweh Elohecha is he who brought you, is he who brought us and our fathers out of the land of Mizraim from the house of bondage. Who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed? And Yahweh drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve Yahweh, for he is our El, our mighty one. But Yehoshua said to the people, you cannot serve Yahweh, for he is a Kodesh El. He is a holy God, for he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake Yahweh and serve foreign Els, then he will turn and do you no harm and consume you. Slicka, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. And the people said to Yehoshua, No, but we will serve Yahweh. So Yehoshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen Yahweh for yourselves to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore he said, Put away for an Elohim, gods, which are among you, and incline your heart to Yahweh. Yisrael. And the people said to Yehoshua, Yahweh Eloheinu, we will serve. And his voice 
we will obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this teaches us that we are witnesses against our own selves. Behold, I call heaven and earth against you to bear witness. So there's the first witness, heaven. There's the earth, the second witness. Your own law, our own law says that by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be confirmed. You just read that we were witnesses against our own self. One, Ehad, Stein, two, Shalosh, three. Three is the Hebrew number of completion. You've got three complete witnesses witnessing against Israel itself. And you weren't witnessing by yourself against you. You have heaven and earth. Nor did heaven and earth testify against us by ourselves, for we were a testimony against ourselves based upon our behavior. So now when we tie all that in that you read at the beginning, when Yukazio started out with that there were three that bared record, right? And it's talked about those three were the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And that those, they keep the record in the heavens. And those who keep the record on earth were the water huh, and the blood and the spirit. And these three agree as one. Three again, completion. You've got a cycle of completion here, which is the fullness of something. Then when we examine, we have no recourse to speak in a proud haughty way about us keeping this law because we have never kept it. We never kept it. We would become then liars on the face of the earth and liars in heaven. What we should say is those of us who tried to keep it, keep it and kept it to the best of our ability, but all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yah. So again, my question is, who is the faithful witness in Israel because there's got to be one there has to be one because if not then the scripture is not true because now you now you should be asking the question wait a minute okay wait a minute if you can't find no Israelite you can call call on David all you want to David's my father call on one of our fathers call on him and see don't you come across scripture that David sinned David was an adulterer huh right right that's right. Okay. David wanted to have a man killed for his own wife, right? That was okay. covetous, right? David broke the commandments. But now David gets brought back into the fullness of Yah's head by never committing the same sin twice. Okay. That's why he's called a man after Yah's own heart. You go and cite Solomon. Full of wisdom and knowledge. Wealthiest man on the earth. Wisest man. But when he got old and he wanted to get King Solomon's gold, a stimulant for men. Well, because he was feeling his lack of virility, he went off and got him some heathen women. And you see what the heathen women did. Caused him to transgress. So we can't use him as no example. Go ahead. Cite any Israelite Messiah. Go ahead. Call on Samson. I saw Samson with the daughters of Timnah. Go ahead. Huh? We can't cite it if we're going to be truthful. The only one that we can cite that never broke the commandments, that kept the word because he was the word made flesh, was Yahweh Shai, was Yahshua the Messiah. And this Hallelujah. is what the, the Israelite communities who are non-Messianic don't really understand because none of us can glory in the law because none of us. I am a bare record that I have never kept the law perfect. Somebody needs to stop telling that lie and tell the truth. Then you don't have the right to judge one another wrongly. You judge each other rightly in the law and in the testimony and then you plead the Messiah over the people because he's the sacrifice. Woo. We ain't making no sacrifices, Israel. We are a bunch mm. of people who twist the truth and cherry pick, and we cherry pick and grape pick and, and apple and orange pick. We are fruit eaters. Yes, we are. But you choose whatever scripture you want that serve your purpose and your need. Well, I choose them all because none of us are just in his sight. None of us. Mm. Y'all all right? And I ain't coming down with you. I'm laying it out hey. for all of us. I included myself in it. And this is the type 
of examination we need to do among ourselves. People standing out there on Facebook and all these other places talking about, I keep the law. You need to stop that lie. You ain't kept the lie. It's a wonder if a lightning bolt ain't come down, a fire fell from heaven to consume you and that frivolous garment you wear. Yeah, I said it. I've seen some of them. They got fringes dragging the ground. You are not modest. You are supposed to be modest. You talking about our women showing their cleavage. You showing your self-righteousness with all them leather up, jaked up, Power Ranger of garments that you wear. Take that fool and this off and humble yourself before the Creator. To be seen by men. I want somebody to be seen by men. You took it right out my mouth, I keep. Walking around, you van all these other different things. That's pride. Don't you know pride got us in this situation? Lying got us in this situation. Mm. This is to all of Israel, near and far, those who ever hear this. Say this to you out of love and correction. They're walking around, and that's just haughtiness. That's all for show. Greed ain't making, he ain't interested in no vogue and fashion. Everything he do is out of the world, Dang. and it's out of fashion in the world's eyes. Whatever he does seems boring and unrealistic, but really it stirs your spirit. And you can get more out of reading that word than going to the juke joint and cutting the rug, doing the running man and the percolator and all that other twerk foolishness they doing. Okay. Yeah, I know some of the Israelites get up and they right on the Shabbat and right, some folk right now is laying back drinking wine. I know this. What? Yes, I know this. I ain't, talking about, I ain't talking about drinking wine for the soothing of the soul and the spirit, which you can do. I'm talking about getting tore up drunk. Oh, and we're justified. But these are the same people standing on the street corners calling out the heathen and calling out these hey, brothers and hey. sisters who don't know who they are. What? The hey. of somebody else. And then somebody walking around talking about some foolishness that their camp is the true camp. You a liar and the truth ain't in you. Hey. Our camp hey. don't all the time, 24, 7, 364. You are not beyond rebuke and correction. And so I judge Israel that tells that lie by Yah's word. Let Yah oh. be true and every man be a liar. Y'all understand what I'm saying? People walking Dang. around, I ain't got to name no names like that. You know who I'm talking about. And everybody in them become a fashion show. People up in New that York was... walking around talking, calling some brother the comforter. Really? You better run up out of that camp, giving that what? title of, yes, calling some brother the comforter when the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Abba help us. One of the brothers, Bless. one of the wow. sisters typed, Abba help us. That's Abba Atsul. Atsul mean help us. We need some help. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. She came. Mm -hmm. So y'all hear what I'm saying. We got to be right with what we're doing. The truth about, look, you look at Moses. Moses wasn't no placator for us. Moses told us the truth. And Moses went beyond reproach because Moses sinned. We all sin. I admit to you at the times I sin. Don't you not, don't you cover that lie. Remember we started off saying to Yah to Yah and a liar is an abomination. Okay. Tell the truth. Release yourself from the burden of the captivity of the sin of the lie. Oh. You were an adulterer at one time, then tell the truth. Go to the Father in prayer and reveal that secret that he already knows. And if you offended a man's house, go and beg his forgiveness. If you offended that woman's house, go and beg the forgiveness. You want to set things right. The world is in the upset, topsy-turvy way because Israel ain't right. That's what's wrong with the world. Come on, Israel. Come on. The scripture on. says that the heavens and the earth and the earth groans for the revelation yeah. of the sons and daughters of Yah. Hallelujah. And so he ain't talking about the wicked and the evil. Because don't you tell me you Abraham's children. Because Yah will raise up stones unto Abraham from these rocks that are his children. Okay. Would you call our father Abraham? Because if we were Abraham's seed, then we would do the what? The works of Abraham. That's what the scripture said. And Abraham was a man who kept this way because he would teach his family and charge them after him to do what? To institute justice and mercy and keep the way of Yah on the earth. 
You got Israelites talking about, I, don't, I can't sleep with her because he, he's not in my camp. I, I dare you to do that. I rain down the word of the creator with judgment down on any man that does that and uses this word in a profoundly evil way against one another. Uh. Yes, I'm telling the truth to you today. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. Don't tell me about the love you have for y'all. We sitting around here clowning acting like a fool with one another. Have mercy on our souls, Father. Toda ya, toda la el. Y'all all right? Well, y'all got awfully quiet there. I'm sorry. <laughs> hallelujah. Dang, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teach it. Teach it. Hallelujah. Now, I can show that captivity we went into, and then so the 400 years that we were dealing with, and so now you touched upon what Jehoshaphat, or rather not Jehoshaphat, what uh, Jehoshua taught, right? And so now Dang. we look for the prophecy of the captivity occurring to us, bullet pointed this, saints, when we made the people who were not priests, priests, I'm in the book of Kings now, right? After Solomon's death, his son had the kingdom torn from him, and Ahijah the prophet ripped the coat of many colors from his son in half and gave him a tribe, two tribes, because he didn't count Levi, and the other ten pieces he gave to his enemy. And this was the incident between Yeraboom and Rehoboam. Now, wait now. So one of the brothers, now he the king, but he's not the rightful king. And the rightful king is suffering because he didn't do right, and his father was an idolater. Now, we can love Solomon all we want to because Solomon was the wisest man on the earth. Don't you see how this word works, that if you do good, justice, and righteousness, that Yah will remember you in that way and it's recorded? But the books of Ezekiel 3 and 33 say that if a man committed sin and he does not repent, then all of the evil that he did and then all of the good, rather, that he did will not be remembered for the blood is on his hands. I don't want no blood on my hands. You don't want no blood on your hands. So we cited what Solomon did that was wrong, just like we cite what Solomon did that was right. We don't cherry pick here. So in reference to what we're talking about, if we look at it with honest eyes, Israelites, we did things at times that weren't good and pleasing. And we know this phrase. I'm going to use it like I use it every week. So go the king. So go, so go the people. So if the king is good, righteous, and just, the people are what? Righteous and just. Righteous, righteous and just. just. That's the figurehead. So when you read the scripture and it says, and such and such king did good, what was good and just in the eyes of Yah, you read that story about that king, you find out that all Israel was doing good at that time. You read the story about Manassas. Ooh, Manassas was one of the wickedest kings we ever had. Right? He saw people in half. He was evil. You know, he sawed Isaiah the prophet in half. Read the book. Right? So, so go the king, so go the people. So we ended Jeremiah 25 and 11 for the prophecies. Now we're going to go off through these prophecies, and we take about 10 minutes in these prophecies. And then we're going to migrate into the latter prophets, uh, Isaiah, or the major prophet there, and we're going to Yeremiah, then we're going to go into, into Malachi. And then we're going to close in the Besorah. So I'm going to ask you like I always do, and I'm not going to be presumptuous because I really don't know what you're going to say because I believe in doing this. I don't like running past time, but I do believe in doing everything decently in order. But we'd like to just take another 20 to 30 minutes. So do you have time so we can fellowship just another 20 or 30 minutes, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We always have time. Hallelujah. All right. Nothing better to have time for. <laughs> we have, we're teaching this word. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 25, 11. <laughs> when does saints say an hour? <laughs> King, and it reads on this wise. You mean Yahoo 25 and 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So write that down. So we dealt with our Egyptian captivity the first time, and then we touched on briefly Assyrian captivity, which is still in its perpetuity because we are still out of our land. And the ten tribes that left under the invasion of the Assyrian kingdoms under Shalamanzar, Sinatarib, Tiglath Pileser, and Sargon II. And that invasion happened in 721, 722 BC. This one here that we're just reading about occurs in 607 BC. And it's under the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar. And the period of time is 70 years that we were slaves to Babylon. Let's confirm this historical prophecy by another prophecy. So by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be confirmed. Jeremiah 26, 10 and 11. Mommy. 26, 10, and 11. It reads on this wise. When the princes of Yehuda, when the princes of Yehawada heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of Yehawah and sat in the entry of the new gate of Yehawah's house. And the priests and the prophets spoke to the princes. And all the people saying, this man deserves to die, for he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your ears. Hallelujah. So they wanted to kill who? Jeremiah. They wanted to kill Jeremiah because he was telling them what thus said Yahweh. They lowered the brother in a doggone bucket into the pit. All right? We drug, we drug Ezekiel, yes, Kael, over rocks in Babylon. We did this. We saw, we watched and stood by while Manasseh sawed Isaiah the prophet in half. Y'all hear this? I've sent you my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but you would not heed. We would not hear until the wrath of Yahweh fell upon Jerusalem and there was no remedy. He had to completely scat scatter us. You, you are living the prophecy. Every one of you online, everyone who will hear this later, those who will never even hear this, the fact that Israel is in these lands of the captivity are a manifest testimony to the realness, the rightness, and the accuracy of his word. You are living witness. That should, there alone, never allow doubt to come in your mind about Yah's word. No doubt should ever, the fact that you are alive in the lands of the captivity is proof that his word is real. You are a living testimony to this. Huh? Jeremiah 29 and 10, before we go into the actual event, let's look at another prophecy. Give me Yahoo 29 and 10, and it reads on this slide. For thus says Jehovah, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So write down, saints, in your margin, 70 years at Babylon. 70 years at Babylon. That is the hand of Yah, 10. Why do you say that? All right, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Wa, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yad. Yad, ten, the tenth character represents the hand of Yah. Take the seven, which is perfection. Multiply the seven years times the hand of Yah, ten. The seven for perfection times the hand of Yah, ten, is the 70 years that we would be slaves in Babylon. Not 69, and no longer than 70, nor 71. You wouldn't see 71 years in Babylon. 70. So now let's confirm this with the history, because that's the prophecy. And Yakazia read, it says that at the end of 70 years, I will perform my good work. And that good work was what? Returning you back to the land. So now let's confirm the historical event. Second Chronicles, chapter 36, verses 14 through 21. Yekazio, take us there. Second Chronicles 46, 14 to 21. 
36 or 46, I came. Uh, chapter, Second Chronicles, chapter 36. If I said 46, okay, I didn't read, I went into a whole other book. <laughs> okay. 14, 14 through? 14 through uh, 21, sir. Okay, and it reads on this wise, Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgressed more and more according to all the abominations of the heathen and mm. defiled the house of Yahweh, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. And Yahweh, El of their fathers, sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of Yah, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. Therefore, he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, on the aged or weak. He gave them all into his hand. And all the articles from the house of Yah, great and small, the treasures of the house of Yahweh, and the treasures of the king and his leaders, all these he took to Babylon. Mm. Then they burned the house of Yah, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all the places with fire, and destroyed all the precious possessions. And those who escaped from the sword he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia to fulfill the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Yer, Yer, Slika, by the mouth of Yer, Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath. And long as she had laid desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, that is the act. That is the very historical recording, right? It was in a chronological frame recorded in the book of Chronicles. What happened? What we experienced? This is of a historical record. Came out of the mouth of Yah through his prophet Jeremiah. Seventy years. So we're dealing with the creator in this seventy years in his absoluteness. Now, some would say, well, why you all are talking about leaving in the next year, two, three, no later than four years, to the land of Israel? Because we firmly believe it has been revealed through the word of Yah by the mouth of his prophet, prophets, that just as there was 70 years determined upon us in Babylon, 400 years have been determined upon us here. How do we come to our understanding? By the reading of the books. Daniel Chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Let's see what that says. <clears throat> Daniel, chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And it reads on this wise. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was Mech, over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books mm. the number of years specified by the word of Yahweh through Yahu the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Daniel knew that the end of the captivity would be at 70 years. Why? Because he read it in the book of Jeremiah. So when he read that, it was the year 537 B.C., 70 years after the first invasion, 607 B.C. So he understood. So wait a minute. It's time for us to leave. Well, how do you know? I had this understanding by the reading of the prophets. 70 years was determined. So when people ask you, well, why do y'all think it's 400 years? Because you have the understanding by the reading of the book. Of what? Moses. Out of him, he was a prophet. Where? Genesis fifteen thirteen. What? Four hundred years. Why you want to stay longer in hell? <laughs> Why? It don't make no sense. Okay. Then brothers want to say, "Oh, we can't get up and, until the ships of Israel come." 
What? By that time, some of you all are slain. I'm just going to be real with you. Whoever comes into this next administration is going to put some real heat on us this time. Woo. Now, you think you done caught hell. You didn't catch hell like you caught hell the last eight years. You didn't catch that type of hell under Bush. I'm going to be real with you. Police weren't just killing you like they was killing you under Obama. You caught some hell under Obama. You over a thousand of you died in a, a thousand of us died in two years at the hands of the police. People who are to protect and serve. Okay. You had the top cop. Yeah, brothers, talk to me. You had the top cop. We had the top cop. Eric Holder, Attorney General, and we were dying in droves. We got a woman who is an Israelite that don't even know she's an Israelite, and she the top cop. She's the Attorney General. Sister Lynch, is it the name now? Uh, are you catching hell? Okay. When the new administration comes in, you will get a new, you will get a new attorney general, and I can assure you the persecution is going to be turned up. Okay. So if you want to stay here, we respectfully, hallelujah, we respectfully pray for you and say that's your choice. But don't try to convince us not to leave, because we already see many, many TKL euphorism. The kingdom has been weighed in the balance and has been found wanting, and y'all about to judge her, and she's been given unto the Medes and the Persians. And you are told in Zechariah 2, 6, 8, come up out of her Zion, flee from the midst of the daughter of Babylon. Every man save his life. One of the brethren and sister and popped up there just now. Get your passport. I'm telling you again. You get your passport. I don't need your okay. no passport. I didn't come here with a passport. Yes, you did. Your passport was called a bill of lading because you was written on the ship's manifest as chattel property. That's what's your passport in here. You didn't come through here like others did when they came through Ellis Island for citizenry. But you had papers to get in here. Yeah, come on, Israel. You were listed on the slave ship manifest. Don't tell me you did. I told you everything's written. When we were state police officers and the department had a policy, if it was not written, it didn't happen. Don't you know the scripture got that policy? When Yahweh shall say, it is written, that man not liveth by bread alone. Man liveth by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yah. Does man live? Yahweh shall quote it, Yah's word, that is written back to Satan, to defeat Satan. Don't come tell me you don't need no passport. If you're going to get up out of here now, because by the time the Creator gets through dealing with this heathen nation, you can walk out of here scot-free, but she might not be here after the ashes rise to the heavens. Up, Zion, up. You know understand? That's faith. The scripture tells you when you see these things happen and you see the prophecies unfolding, lift up thy head for thy redemption's draw now. Up, Zion, escape. <laughs> yes, up, Zion, and get up out of the land of Babylon. I keep, take me. Y'all all right? Hey. Hallelujah. Take me into the book of Psalms, hey, one, hey. 115th Psalm, verse 1 through 8. Psalms 115, verse 1 through 8. Psalms to Helene 115, 1 through 8. It reads on this wise, not unto us, O Yahweh, not unto us, but you but to your name give glory, because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, So where is their El? Where is their God? But our El is in Shemaim, our El is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold. Their works are the hands, their work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So idolatry got us into the condition that we are in, and right worshiping the living L will get us out of the condition that our people is in. 
He just enumerated idolatry and that 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 has eyes and cannot see and ears that cannot hear and they have feet and cannot walk or move. And so are those who are like them that make them. What are they? They are dead, lifeless idols. And those who make them, they have the void of the spirit. They have the void of truth and they are devoid of understanding. They are dead like them. Take those, tell your family in love to take those images and idols and those pictures of that false messiah and that wooden crucifix off the wall. That is idolatry. You should not make unto thyself any graven image of any likeness in heaven above, on the earth, in the waters under the earth. Don't bow down to it nor serve or worship it. But I, Yahweh, am a jealous heir, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Look at the condition that Israel is in. We wonder why. Our people who don't know, and now again another shooting over the weekend here in Chicago. Shooting on I-55, shooting on I-57. Our people just gunning them. There's no love. They don't know the love of the law of Yah. But yet, they're filled tomorrow. Tomorrow on first day worship, them pews going to be filled. And that jack leg, mealy mouth Negro minister gonna have that hat passed around or that little whatever they call basket passed, collecting more money, six hundred seventy-five million dollars every Sunday. Sunday worship. Like, so look at that. All that money. Where is that money going? Because it's definitely not going into the community to help nobody, huh? Why are we putting this scripture says like you putting your money into a bag with moth eating holes? That means you have no investment in it. Nothing to show for it. We have not asked for one dime, nor will we. Your tithe is from the earth and the fruits in the land. But if you're gonna offer a free will offering, because the the work is a serious work. Emma's Miria laboring to the wee hours in the morning, Saray and others laboring. You will help laboring. This is a real work. Cost all these different things to put this together. We want the sincerity. We ain't trying to build no building here. Somebody asked us the question, I'll tell you again. So you don't misquote me. So nobody on the line has misinformation. We desire to return to the land of our fathers and establish the kingdom of Yah in Israel. That's why we going home. Ain't going home to establish no building. You're the building. You're the church. You're the ecclesia. You're the mikra. You're the called out assembly. You meeting inside your house as the Dang. apostles did in ancient times. That's what the Dang. Hallelujah. and Priscilla, they met in the church in their house. You're the church. Tell you are Tell the Yah's established order. You're the temple he dwells in. Tell us, our king. Millions of dollars into these buildings, like the doggone scriptures talk about when it says you're like whitewashed walls, tombs of dead man's bones in them. The real church. Go in there and you walk inside the place and people are doing break dancing in there. Yes, they are. They're sitting around yeah, they... riding hoverboards in the church. My good king. Yes. Sitting up in there and somebody stand up and they open up the doggone scriptures, or rather they open up the scripture and ask for a testimony, utterly foolish. And somebody said, oh, I had a vision. And you hear about what the vision is? has nothing to do with any scriptorial substance. Dang. Nothing. nothing at all. And then somebody get up and say, oh, I guess, let me ask you this question. Could you give us a word? And they said, let me prophesy to you. And all you hear is, dub, 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 dub. Okay, hallelujah. Okay. Distinguishable foreign foolish language where the scripture says that if you're going to prophesy in tongue, have an yes, interpreter. Yes. Yes, yeah, we tear down all these lies. We tear down the lies. Our people hey. are steeped in these lies. Filled with all this emotional foolishness and emotional rhetoric. Spirit of air. No real substantive scripture. And don't you know it's a setup? Because they know you are spiritual people, so how do they set you up? They set you up with the organ. They set you up with the music. They set you up with the tambourine. And all you get is the good, 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 good feel for a so-called spiritual meal. But it's only for a nanosecond because you walk outside them doors and you go right back into hell. Look at your communities. You are living in hell on earth. Spirit of air. Yes. 
And one of the one of the, one of the saints is the Kundalini. And if you understand what the Kundalini is, dealing with the spiraling serpent of robos, it just goes around and around and around and around she goes. And where she stops, nobody knows. Just complete utter foolishness. We got to come. Y'all got to look. Please don't go back there. <laughs> one saint said, I, I'm, I'm going to leave being an Israelite and go back to the church. And I sat there shaking my head saying, how could you leave being an Israelite when you're an Israelite in blood and in flesh and in bone and in spirit? Because they, the they want the good field teaching because they want somebody to tickle their ear. They want somebody to tell them we're good. Yes, we are good. We are just. And we can be righteous if what the scripture says, Deuteronomy 6.25, and it shall be our righteousness if we do all that is written in the command. you got to keep these commandments. You want to please y'all? Then do what it says in John 14. It said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. Don't keep my religion. Huh? That's what the church wants you to do. Religion makes you responsible for what you believe. The Torah under the law is righteousness. It makes you responsible for what you do. That's two different things. Okay. Take us to the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, 9, and Isaiah 46, 7. We want to find out, since now you know who are the witnesses against Israel from the celestial field and from the terrestrial field, meaning heaven and earth, which is the high host of heaven and that which is on earth. Israel has testified against itself. So now who is the testament and testimony against the world? Let's find out who the testament and the testimony and the witnesses against the world are. Isaiah 44, Dang. 9, Isaiah 44, 6 and 7. 44, 9 and 44, 6 and 7. What does it say? Dang. 44, 9 reads on this wise, those who make an image of all them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witness. They neither see nor know that they may they neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. And forty four six and seven read on this wise. Thus says Jehovah, the King of Israel and his Redeemer and the, the and Yahweh of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. I am, I, and who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order before me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come. Let them show these things, let them show these to them. Hallelujah. And what is verse... Uh, 8 of the 44th chapter of Isaiah say. Cain, do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there an L beside me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I, I know not a one. Hallelujah. Verse Seven of the forty-sixth chapter, Isaiah forty-six, verse seven. Forty-six, verse. Uh, slick up. No, Isaiah. I stand corrected. Isaiah forty-three, eight and ten. That's why I want to go. Okay. Isaiah forty-three, eight and ten, and it reads on this wise: Bring out the blind people who have eyes, and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and all the people be assembled who are among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is the truth. Hallelujah. And what is oh, verse Shlika, 10? Shlika. You are my witnesses, says Yahweh, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no L form, nor shall there be after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, saints, uh, the witnesses against the world are not Jehovah. 
they're not okay. Jehovah Witnesses are not the biblical witnesses that testify against the world. You are Yahweh's witnesses. You know, Charles Taz Russell back in the late eighteen hundreds and early nineteen hundreds. They put this together and they called Jehovah's Witnesses. Everybody didn't want to take a portion of your identity. It's Jehovah's taking your witnessship. And here comes the Khazars and the Edomites and the Gehaziites and the Lebanites taking your identity and calling themselves Yahweh, Judah, and Israel. They are That's not the, the true witnesses. They are not true Israel, and they are not Yahweh, lo ata Yahweh, you are not the Jews. Lo ata Yisrael, and you are not Israel. Ani, I am. Ani, you are Yasharala, you are Israel, you are make up and form all the 12 tribes. That's part of your heritage. The laws, the commandments, the statutes, the precepts, the judgments, the prophecies, the giving of the law, the coming of the Messiah, all that's your heritage. That's why I don't reject none of it. I will take the good with the bad. Every bit of that is Israel, that's me. I want all of it. I ain't going to cherry pick nope, none of it. I even take Dathan. And so when I teach about Dathan, I say, you know, Dathan, y'all heard me talk about Dathan. Dathan is a Reubenite, an Israelite. We got to deal with him. Take the bad. You want to take what portion of the book you pick and choose, and then those non-believers who I said this before, I say this again. When you say you are non-messianic, non means not. Not messianic. Not and non means no. That means no Messiah. So when you say you are anti-messianic, you are an anti-Christ. That's all you are. Let's make it simple to you. Yes, we take the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because that's who we are. We, we've been the good. we showed up in the bad. And when we've been bad, our pockets got tore up and we sure look ugly. Hmm. But now, Abba is returning to us and he's changing things for us. And returning us back into his presence, which is a blessing for each and every one of us to receive. Isaiah spoke about this well. How did Jeremiah speak about this? Jeremiah 42, 1 and 6. Okay. Jeremiah 42, 1 through 6. 42, 1 through 6. Good. Speaker, now see, go ahead. I'm sorry. And no, no, no need to be sorry. And then once Nicasio reads Genesis, like a Jeremiah 42, 1 and 6, then we're going to migrate into Malachi chapter 3, verse 5 and 7. A corresponding scripture as we close, because we're going to try to do this, like I said, decently in order for the sake of brevity. We're going to go to Matthew 23, 24 to 39. Then we're going to go to the book of John, the gospel of John, 5, 31 through 47. The gospel of John, 8, 12, and 18. And then we will close in 1 John 5, verses 5 through 10. So, I keep please, Babakasha, if you could read Jeremiah 42, 1 and 6. Okay, he reads on this wise. Now all the captains of the forces, Johanan, the son of Kereth, Jasmiah, the son of Hosiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Please let our petition be acceptable to you and pray for us to Yahweh Elohecha for all his remnant, since we are left but a few of many, as you can see, that Yahweh Elohecha may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should, which we should do. Then Jeremiah, Yahu, the prophet, said to them, I have heard. Indeed, I will pray to Yahweh Elohecha according to your words, and it shall be that whatever Yahweh answers you, I will declare it to you, and I will keep nothing back from you. So they said to Yahu, Let Yahweh be a true and faithful witness between us. Ooh. If we do not do anything 
to everything which Shahawa and Oheaka sends, sends us by you. Whether it be pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of Jehovah Eloheka, to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of Jehovah Eloheinu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they had to go back and revisit the prophet and 